a great crowd. I want to welcome to the stage from 29 Palms, a local gal, Harley Hargrove. with all of you showing support for Senator Bernie Sanders. Like most of us here, I have a busy life. I stand here today as a mother of five, full-time employee, and a full-time college student. And just like everybody else, I'm racking up those college loans. I am also someone who is telling everyone I possibly can that there is no better choice for, Sen for president than Senator Bernie Sanders. Now many of you know it's not easy going to college in the morning, then going to work, then going home just to finish assignments that are due the very next day. Yet still, I find time to volunteer for, to help Bernie Sanders become the next President of the United States because he believes in me and us. And because of that, I am willing to cross those milestones. I am also a committed but often frustrated mother of a special needs son. Frustrated because at my son's school I was looking for the help he needs. I followed the rules. I talked to the administrators. I did the criteria they wanted me to meet. And when I wasn't happy with that, it was that moment that I, that I decided to run for the local school board. I decided I can either sit back or I can get up and get things done and work for parents and children of my community. And guess what? Since 2012, I have been the outspoken board member that represents parents, teachers, children, and guess what? You can just ask our administrators how outspoken I am. Now why is this important? We are at a pivotal moment of the greatest political revolution to date. Senator Bernie Sanders has been willing to speak up regarding the issues that we face, issues that matter to us from marching with Dr. Martin Luther King to standing up to false Wall Street. Bernie Sanders says, no fight is too big, and we believe in that. Senator Sanders has opened the eyes of voters, both young and old, male and female, and inspiring young people to get involved in the revolution. The energy and input of young voters is inspiring. This is our moment, our political revolution. America and tell them you will no longer get rich off the backs of young working Americans or anyone else. This is our chance, our chance to tell the special interest PACs that they are done deciding who gets elected. We do. This is the moment we say enough with profiting off the backs of struggling college students and lastly climate change is real and so is a political revolution that we have been waiting for. Thank you, Coachella Valley. And much like this desert heat, let's get feeling the burn. And guess what? Let's make some noise. The future is the next president of the United States, Senator Bernie Sanders. Cathedral City. And let me begin by 
Let me begin by thanking the Hive Minds for their musical band. Juan Ayon, our California field organizer. Greg Pettis, Christine Avery, and Carolee Hargrove for that really good introduction. Cathedral City, are you ready for a political revolution? Are you ready to tell the world that we want a government which represents all of us and not just the one percent? Are you ready to tell the world? You noticed. Are you ready to tell the world that this country faces many serious crises and that together we are going to resolve those crises. We're going to win this election for a number of reasons. And the most important reason is that the American people understand that given the problems that we face, a government run by billionaires is not going to solve those problems. Here in California, we intend in this campaign to do dozens of rallies up and down the state. We're going to speak to more than 200,000 Californians. And on June 7th, there's going to be a huge voter turnout. And we're going to win the Democratic primary here. And if we win the Democratic primary here in California and in the other five states that are up on June 7th, we're going to have enormous momentum going into the Democratic Convention. And at a time, at a time when every national poll and almost every statewide poll shows us defeating Donald Trump, always with a bigger margin than Clinton, we're going to leave the Democratic Convention with the nomination. And let me tell you that when we leave the Democratic, nominate Democratic Convention with the nomination, Donald Trump is toast. And he is toast because he is not the kind of candidate that the American people want to become president. The American people are not going to vote for a candidate who insults Mexicans and Latinos. They're not going to vote for a candidate who insults Muslims and women. insults veterans and African Americans. The American people understand that our strength, our unique strength among all nations of the world is our diversity. Is the fact that as a nation and California as a state, we have people coming from hundreds of countries all over this world. And that makes us stronger, not weaker. And our goal is to build upon that diversity. Black and white and Latino and Asian American and Native American. Gay and straight, male and female. People born in this country, people who have come into this country. 
And when we stand together, and we don't allow the Trumps of the world to try to divide us up, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Now the theme, the theme, the theme of this campaign is called the political revolution. And guess what? You are the revolutionaries. Now, two years ago, there was a what we call a midterm election, non-presidential national election. You know what percentage of the American people voted? About 33%. 67% of the American people did not vote. 80% of young people did not vote. 75% of low-income working people did not vote and the Republicans won a landslide victory. And that is what very often happens when people give up on the political process, when people are demoralized, when people say, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to participate, bad things happen. Now, I am a member of the United States Senate, and I know something about this. But what the big money interests want. They don't want working people to vote. They want to be able to control the government, control our economy. That's what they want. On June 7th, let's give them a rude awakening. Let's tell them that enough is enough. I appreciate the Bernie, but you know what? It's not Bernie, it's you. In other words, and now let me tell you something. No other candidate for president, I think, probably has ever said this. But this is the truth. The truth is that no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can do it alone. We are now in the process of taking on Wall Street which has endless supplies of money. I mean endless. We are taking on corporate America, which if they want, and what they have done, shut down factories all over this country and move to China if they can make $5 more in profit. We are taking on wealthy campaign contributors. You think most candidates have meetings like this in Cathedral City? They're busy going to some billionaire's mansion and getting $50,000 a person for the campaign. Oh, which reminds me, while I'm here, anybody got $50,000 to contribute? I don't think so. I don't think so. But that's what the difference is between our campaign and the other campaigns. Now, you want to hear something? It would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Donald Trump tells us, who knows, he lies all the time. But he claims, he claims to be a billionaire. We'll take him for his word. He is soliciting funds from Sheldon Adelson, a multi-billionaire. So what you got is a multi-billionaire supporting a billionaire. That is not what American democracy is supposed to be about. American democracy is one person, one vote. Now, it is true that Wall Street has the money. Corporate America has enormous power. The corporate media will tell you what they want you to know, not what the American people need to know. And we have wealthy campaign contributors directing what happens in Congress. That is all true, but there is another truth. And the other truth is that when millions of people stand up and fight back, 
we have the power and we can win. Now we're going to win here in California and we're going to win. We're going to win this nomination and we're going to win the general election because we're doing something. We're doing something that is very radical. We are telling the American people the truth. Here is the truth. We have a corrupt campaign finance system today which is undermining American democracy. Together we're going to overturn this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision. And we're going to have public funding of elections. I want anybody here, and I want you all to think about it. Think about running for school board. Think about running for legislature. Think about running for Congress. And I want you to be able to run without begging millionaires for campaign contributions. But it's not just a corrupt campaign finance system, it is a rigged economy. You all know what I mean by a rigged economy? Here is what a rigged economy is. Over the last 25 years, there has been a massive redistribution of wealth in this country. The middle class has shrunk, and the top one-tenth of one percent has seen a doubling of the percentage of wealth it owns. In other words, the very, very, very rich get much richer, while tens of millions of working families become poorer. What we have right now is the top one-tenth of one percent owning almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Got that? You got 20 people in this country, wealthiest 20, owning far more wealth than the bottom half of America, 150 million people. You got one family, everybody know the Walton family of Walmart? You got any Walmarts near here? Anybody here work at Walmart? Well, what Walmart does, and this is the wealthiest family in America, think about it. They pay wages that are so low that many of their workers are forced to go on food stamps and Medicaid. It's true. And you know what a rigged economy is about? Working families pay higher taxes to provide food stamps for Walmart employees, a company owned by the wealthiest family in America. That's a rigged economy. And I say to the wall, I say to the Walton family, get off of welfare, pay your workers a living wage. Now this will, let me say something that will shock the younger people. They will not think I'm telling the truth, but it is the truth and you can Google it, not now, after you get out of here. And here's the fact. Over the last 30 years, we all know we have seen an explosion of technology. When I was a kid, we didn't have these things. And yet, what has happened is that every worker, almost every worker in America has become more productive because of that technology. We produce more. And yet, despite that, 40 years ago, we had families in America where one worker, in those days often the man, could work 40 hours a week, one person, and bring in enough money to take care of the family. Today, there are very few families that you know where mom is not working, where dad is not working, and where the kids are not working, and yet they're still struggling to pay the bills. Something is wrong with that. Millions of people in America today are working not one job, they're working two jobs, they're working three jobs. What our job together is, and this is what we accomplish 
when we make it to the White House, we create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. I'll tell you something else. A great nation, a truly great nation, is not measured by how many millionaires it has or by how many nuclear weapons it has. A great nation is measured, is judged, by how it treats the weakest and most vulnerable people amongst us. There is no excuse that in America we have millions of senior citizens, disabled veterans, and people with disabilities who are struggling right now to stay alive on $10,000 a year Social Security. There is no excuse when in this country, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country. There is no excuse where today, in Cathedral City or in Burlington, Vermont, moms are going out to work, they're working 50 or 60 hours a week at low wages, and they don't have enough money to provide decently for their children. That is not what this country is supposed to be about. So what are we going to do about it? I'll tell you what we're going to do about it. Now that you asked, I'll tell you. What we're going to do is make it very clear that in this country, if you work 40 hours a week, you will not live in poverty. And that means raising the federal starvation minimum wage from seven and a quarter an hour to $15 an hour. And what it means is that in America, women should not be forced to work for 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. And I know that every man here is going to stand with the women in the fight for pay equity. Now, every month you see on the front pages of the newspaper a report from the federal government. It talks about unemployment in America. And what they say is roughly that official unemployment in America is about 5%. Anybody here believe that? No! Well, you're right. It is not 5%. If you consider those people who have given, given up looking for work, and the millions of people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time, real unemployment is close to 10%. And there are communities all over this country in inner cities and in rural America where the numbers are much higher than that. Our job together is to put the American people back to work. We should be hiring teachers, not firing teachers. We should be hiring well-paid, well-trained childcare workers so when mom goes to work, she knows her kid is getting quality childcare. All over this country, communities are struggling with clean water, with wastewater plants, with roads, and with bridges that are deteriorating and becoming obsolete. In my state of Vermont, we have potholes so large, cars go over them, they disappear, we gotta thaw the people out in the summertime. <laughs> and that's true all over this country. Actually, billions of dollars of damage is caused to automobile owners because of bad roads. You know that? People go over these potholes, their axles get breaking, tires get broken, etc. What we need to do is to put our people back to work rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. 13 million decent paying jobs. This campaign has a message to the billionaires and the large corporations, and that message is 
Your greed is helping to destroy this country. You no longer are going to get it all. It is absurd that we have multinational corporations making billions of dollars a year in profits, stashing their money in tax havens all over the world, and end up not paying in a given year five cents in federal taxes. It is absurd that we got hedge fund managers on Wall Street who pay an effective, i.e. real tax rate, lower than many of you do. We are going to tell corporate America that yes, they will start paying their fair share of taxes. In the last 15 years, this country has seen the loss of millions of good paying jobs because corporate greed has shut down manufacturing plants in America. We've lost tens of thousands of factories, thrown people out on the street, and they go to China or other low-wage countries to produce their products. Together we're going to rebuild the manufacturing sector in this country. And the message is clear to corporate America. If you want the American people to buy your products, you damn well better start manufacturing them here in this country, not in China. You know, it's unbelievable. I mean, what we're talking about is greed that is literally unparalleled in the history of this country. I was in Indiana last month. Two plants are being shut down by a company called United Technologies. A few years ago, this company had $171 million to pay a severance package to its CEO. They gave him $171 million when he left and yet they don't have enough money to keep factories in Indiana and 2,000 workers on the job. That is not acceptable. Over in Anaheim, I was in Anaheim the other day. You got Disney there. Well, Disney pays its workers wages that are very hard for their workers to live on but somehow has enough money to pay $42 million to its CEO. And by the way, Disney prefers to manufacture its toys and its t-shirts and everything else in China rather than in the United States. So our message is Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, come home! This campaign is not just about ending a corrupt campaign finance system in which billionaires buy elections. It is not just turning around a rigged economy in which the very rich get richer and almost everybody else gets poorer. It is also about dealing with the national disgrace of a broken criminal justice system. As a mayor, I was a mayor of Burlington, Vermont for eight years, and in that capacity I dealt with our local police department, a great department, and I worked with police officers all over this country. And let me be clear, the average police officer in America is honest, is hardworking, and has a very, very difficult job. Not easy being a cop today. But like any other public official, if a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. And when we talk about criminal justice reform, we're also talking about reforming local police departments. And that means we have got to demilitarize local police departments. Police departments, police departments should be part of the community, not be seen as an oppressive force in the community.
got to make local police departments reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. We have got to end private corporate ownership of prisons and detention centers. People, corporations should not be making money by locking up more and more people. We have got to create a national law enforcement culture which says that lethal force shooting somebody is the last response, not the first response. We have got to rethink the so-called war on drugs. Now it turns out, turns out that over the last 30 years, millions of Americans have received criminal records for possession of marijuana. It turns out that studies indicate that blacks and whites do marijuana at about equal rates but this is a racial issue because blacks are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana than whites. Turns out that rather in a crazy way, right now the Federal Controlled Substance Act lists marijuana as a Schedule I drug, the highest level, right next to heroin. Now, all of you know, people argue about the pluses and minuses of marijuana, but nobody argues that heroin is a killer drug. They are not equal. Now, all of you know, all of you know that the question of legalizing marijuana is not a federal issue, it is a state issue. At the federal level, I intend to take marijuana out of the federal But the decision to legalize marijuana is a state issue. Four states, Washington, D.C., have voted to legalize marijuana. That issue actually will be on the ballot here in California in November. And I think weighing the pros and the cons, my own view is if I were a resident of California, I would vote to legalize marijuana. But when we talk about drugs, let me just say this. Everybody here knows or should know that we have a major epidemic in this country of opiate addiction and heroin addiction. This is impacting my state. It is impacting the entire country. And what that means is that today and yesterday and tomorrow, people are dying from overdoses of heroin and opiates. This is a crisis that we must address. In my view, the most effective way, the most sensible way to address this crisis is to understand that substance abuse, whether it is drugs or alcohol, should be seen as a health issue, not a criminal issue. And that means that means we need a revolution in mental health treatment in this country. It means that when we have hundreds of thousands of people addicted to one drug or another in this country, we have got to provide mental health treatment to those people when they need it, not six months from now. And I'll tell you something else, which is not a pleasant thought, but it's true. That right now in this country, we have thousands of people who are walking the streets of America who are suicidal, and in some cases, homicidal. We need to understand that just like a physical crisis, somebody gets into an automobile accident, they go into an emergency room. Right now, if you have a mental health crisis, if you were on the edge, if you're suicidal, God forbid if you're homicidal, we need to get those people the help they need now, not six months from now.
This campaign is going to win because we are addressing the real issues facing the American people. This campaign is listening to young people. Look, here is the truth, and everybody knows it's the truth. We live in a very competitive global economy. We need the best educated workforce in the world if our economy is to do well. And that means, this is not hard to understand, I want, you want, what common sense dictates is that every American, young people, middle-aged people, the economy changes, people should be able to get all the education that they need so they can get the good jobs that are out there. Here is the truth. 50 years ago, 50 years ago, you had a high school degree, the odds are that you were able to go out and get a pretty good job and make it into the middle class. By and large, those days are gone. The economy has changed, technology has changed, education has changed. Today, people need more education to keep up with a changing economy. And that is why I believe that in the year 2016, when we talk about public education, it can no longer just be first grade through 12th grade. We've got to make public, public colleges and universities tuition free. Well, let me ask you an honest question. Does anybody here think that that is a radical idea? It is not a radical idea. It's a common sense idea. The economy changes. Our educational system has got to change with a changing economy.